line of this, um, the last stanza of this song said that stand up, stand up for Jesus, the strife will not be long. Do you remember last Sabbath we were studying about some strifes? Um, and um, it was just the moments prior to Jesus coming. It was about the uh, time when the four angels would um, uh, let the the plagues to fall upon the earth. And uh, here says that stand up for Jesus, this strife will not be long, and um, then this day the noise of battle, the next, what's the next? The victory. The victory. The victory victory in Jesus. And uh, then he says that um, to him that overcometh a crown of life shall be he with the king of glory shall reign eternally. So this is um, the promise given to the faithful ones. But um, what's happening with the other ones? <laughs> because just um, at the seventh plague, we know that Jesus is coming. Uh, Jesus is going to reward the ones that um, uh, they were waiting for him. And um, uh, then next event It's this, the saints, they go to heaven and the earth will remain desolate. In Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 to 15 says, And I saw an angel came down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. And cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Verse 6 says that blessed and holy is he that had part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. And um, he shall go out to deceive the nations, which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to the battle the number of whom is at the sand as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about it. And the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and they shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And um, I saw a great white throne, and with him sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those books, which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and the dead hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So this is just um, after um, uh, the... um, as I mentioned, at the, the end of the seventh plagues, uh, Jesus is coming. Uh, he is taking with him the faithful ones, the ones who were waiting for him, who were preparing for his appearing. And um, uh, he is taking with him these people, 
And what is happening with the other ones? He says that they lived not again till this a thousand year passed away. So um, uh, to um, see uh, this um, a thousand years in a, a time frame, we need to know um, uh, what's the beginning of it and what's the end of it, to know how to place it in, in the future, in the history. And there are some events, and um, uh, it's interesting that the way it starts, the same way it ends. It starts with a resurrection, and it ends again with a resurrection. And in um, uh, verse 5, we read that this was the first resurrection. And the dead lived not again till these thousand years were finished. So who resurrects at the first resurrection? We um, mentioned a little bit last week about that, this, uh, that at the first resurrection, who is raised from the death? Those who were death in Christ. Death in Christ. And uh, we mentioned that uh, prior to the coming of Christ, there is um, raised up a group of people, according to Daniel chapter 12. This group of people, he says that uh, some of them, they are raised up from the dead for the life eternal and some for um, everlasting contempt. So these were those whom uh, the faithful ones who died in the third angel's message from 1844 till the end, and they are raised to go and um, meet Christ in glory. <clears throat> the other ones um, which um, uh, are raised for the uh, everlasting contempt, they are those who uh, pierced Christ, those who persecuted Christians, and they uh, raised just to see the one he, they did not believe. They are racing to see the, uh, the king that they persecuted. And at this moment, when Christ comes, they cannot live. They perish because of his glory. So um, uh, at the beginning, he's mentioning that there, before the thousand years is this resurrection. And when Jesus comes, he's making a resurrection also. When uh, he is bringing up the dead in Christ, those, the great multitude, from Adam till the end. So only the righteous ones, because in verse 6, we read that blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. The wickedness, the wicked ones, they do not have any blessing, right? So um, blessed are those who are righteous, and they will be raised, and they will go with Jesus to heaven. So um, uh, that means that um, it includes even those from um, Paul's time, because he mentioned in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 16, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that is sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Notice here it says that there are some which have no hope. Um, here, as human and even the animals, no one likes to die, right? Everyone is afraid to die. They are trying to rescue themselves. They are trying, I don't know, um, in, um, uh, right now there are some floods in Romania. And um, I remember in 2005, there was a flood again. And um, just behind our house, there is a river. And um, while we were watching um, uh, the river, we were watching um, how the um, uh, flood, um, uh, what's the status of it, we noticed that there were houses coming, uh, broken, and the river took them. And we noticed there was um, a piece of wood, and on, the, on that piece of wood, that, there was um, a dog and a cat. <laughs> and probably the dog and the cat, they won't, um, they won't go along together very well. But on that piece of wood, because they wanted to save themselves, they, they were friends at that moment. So they were floating on the river. No one could save them because it was in the middle of the river. But I could see that image, in a sense, creatures trying to preserve their lives. So no one li likes to, to die. But here it says that there are some who die who have no hope. And there are some who die and have some hope. And what is this hope? The hope of the first resurrection that Jesus is taking us to heaven. And the others, they just live their lives. They, they have even this saying that um, I only live once. Let me live the way I want. 
and they have no hope of another of life after death. So uh, Paul mentions that um, uh, this uh, promise was given even for those in his times. And he says that for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend, descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So um, at the coming of Christ, there will be two groups of people. The ones as mentioned in Matthew 25, there will be those who are on the Lord's side, the righteous ones alive, and even the wicked ones which are still alive. The wicked ones, because Jesus comes, uh, because of his glory, they will perish. But while the other ones, they Together with the ones that Christ is resurrecting, they will go to heaven. So, um, what happens to the resurrected ones with the ones which are uh, righteous living? I already mentioned that they will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord. And then they will be together with the Lord, as the verse says. So, how this takes place? In Matthew 24, we read, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. And... Um, I always, when I read these um, uh, verses, and I always remember about this image, you're reading in the Spirit of Prophecy that says that um, in that time, it says, we were mentioned even um, uh, in the previous presentation about the seventh plague, when everything is uh, so um, um, painful, hurting. I mean, um, we are not, um, uh, those who have the seal of the living God will not suffer um, those plagues. But still, um, you are looking for crown that Christ is giving to you. And at this time, those who are uh, seeing the sign, they understand that this is the sign of their deliverance. And those who are dead, he says that the angels are bringing the children who passed away and bringing them in the arms of their mothers. He says that little children are born by holy angels to their mother's arms. Friends, long separated by death, are united, never more to part and with songs of gladness ascend together to the city of God. At that time, all the righteous will return with him to spend a thousand years in heaven. And there was um, a song um, in Romanian language. And um, uh, as um, I was a child, um, our pastor at that time, he used to play um, um, uh, the accordion. You know what is the accordion? And uh, he um, came and always he was singing this song. And um, this song was about, says that um, I had a dream one night that I saw my wife and my children there in heaven and they were asking, where is daddy? <laughs> so um, that song, it's always in my mind. And thinking that about this image, I don't know how it will be like um, to be there and not to have someone, some of your friends or some of your family. Or... Um, now, if we are thinking to our family, we will be there and they won't see us there. So now is the time when we still have the grace to prepare for this event. And um, in the, that moment, as I mentioned even about Balaam, uh, he made a prophecy, my eyes shall see him. And at that moment, he really believed that. But he will see Christ coming at this point, uh, but it will be too late for him. Uh, he will see the uh, city, but it will be too late for him. Um, Job, another person that says that my eye shall see him, he will see Christ when he will resurrect him the first time. So uh, it's a difference uh, from um, the first resurrection and the second one. Because the first time we know that we will go with him to heaven. The second one, we will see him but we won't see him as a friend. We will see just what we lost. We see one, or just what um, could be ours, but is taken from us. So what happens with those which are wicked in this 
for a moment because we mentioned that the ones who which are righteous they will go to heaven. Um, in Revelation chapter 6, verses 14 to 17 says that, And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens, and the rocks, and in the rocks of the mountains. And said, and said unto uh, to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath is come. And who shall be able to stand? And there is um, a prophecy made in um, Amos chapter 8 that says that um, that day is great. He says that uh, in that day there will be a famine in the world, and not a famine of the bread, and not a thirst for the water, but a famine and a thirst for the word of God. In that moment, those people which did not prepare themselves to meet God, at this moment, they, they understand that they need God. But it's too late. They go to and fro from one side to another of the earth to look for the word of God, and they won't find it. And when they see that there is no solution, what they will do? It says that they will go from one place to another, to the mountains, to the rocks, and they will cry unto them, fall upon us and hid ourselves. Because we cannot stand in front of this person which, are, which is sitting on the throne. Who shall be able to stand, they say. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 7 and 8. And to you who are troubled, rest with us, when the Lord shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, many times, uh, being um, in this world, um, we are meeting um, all kinds of people around us. We go to work, we meet people which um, they are trying to make us do something wrong. Um, we, as mentioned, even in the Sabbath school, Satan is trying always to tempt us. And uh, he is trying to tempt us through the people around us sometimes. And uh, sometimes we ask ourselves, why does God allow all this evil to happen to me? Why does God allow all this evil to happen to this world? But um, uh, what I understand from here is that the Lord is giving the same time of grace to everyone even to the ones which are persecuting us. He is giving them grace to repent. But at this moment, because they did not repent, they did not take advantage of this time of grace, at this time, the Lord, as mentioned in, um, at the end of the seventh plague, he said, it is done. It is done with this. Now, we finish with that, and uh, those who did not take this advantage to repent, they will be punished. They will have the consequences. So how is this um, going to take place? In Revelation chapter 19, it says that, I saw heaven opened, and behold, the white horse, with he that sat upon him, was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as flames of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And him treateth the winepress of the fearnesses of wrath of God and the wrath of Almighty God. And him hath on his vesture and on his tithe a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Those who did not take advantage to repent, now it's too late for them. And um, the Old Testament also is describing this in Isaiah and also Jeremiah. 
But Isaiah says that fear and the pit and the snare are upon thee, O inhabitant of the earth. And it shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit. And he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the, in the snare. For the windows from on high are open, and the foundations of the earth do shake. The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard, and shall be removed like a cottage, and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall and not rise again. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on height, and the kings of the earth upon the earth. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit, and shall be shut up in the prison, and after many days shall be they visited. So um, you notice here that it says that the earth is going to be uh, like um, chaos in it. Um, and um, I don't know if you noticed um, while you are driving and um, um, someone is braking uh, uh, in front of you and um, you are not paying attention and uh, when you see that you brake. Uh, what is happening with the things you have in the car? Everything goes forward, right? <laughs> because everything um, um, goes, everything rides in your car with the same speed your car goes. So when you brake, everything breaks. So, but uh, because of the speed, everything goes upward. And I was thinking about the, the Earth, because the globe is rotating. Imagine when the Lord is stopping it. I mean, uh, everything is rotating and then just stopping it. <laughs> everything will be a mess. Because the grace of God is not there to hold it. Jeremiah also, he mentions, um, also this uh, prophecy making, says that thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great um, whirlwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. And the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. They shall not be lamented, neither gathered nor buried, they shall be dung upon the ground. So at this moment, what is happening? All, everything that has life, it says, every person, the wicked ones which are still on this earth, they will die. And what is happening with them? There is no one to go to bury them, no one to put them in a grave or to do something with their bodies. And what is happening to them? Revelation 19 says, that the angel standing in the sun said, uh, cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of, of mighty men and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both spo small and great, and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. So as mentioned, everything is just on the ground. And um, the fowls, the birds, the... Can you name a bird that... Does that? Yes. So um, they will have a party at that moment. He says that um, the angel are, is crying unto them, come and, and um, enjoy. And they eat all the meat that is dead on the, on the earth. And at the end of it, what happens? Eventually, these this, um, this, um, birds, they die because there is nothing else to eat. And also, and uh, Jeremiah mentions that uh, the earth remains without form and void. So uh, it is like in the beginning. When God created the um, earth, he says that the earth was void. Darkness everywhere was, was just waters. And um, this is the image of the earth during this period of a thousand years. 
He says that I beheld, and lo, there was no man, and all the birds of the heavens were fled. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord, and by his fierce anger. For thus has the Lord said, The whole land shall be desolate, yet will I not make a full end. The whole city shall flee for the noise of the horsemen and bowmen. They shall go into thickets and climb up upon the rocks. Every city shall be forsaken, and not a man dwell therein. And um, it's hard to imagine that um, looking to Atlanta, we're looking to these big cities that we are passing through. It's interesting, it's um, almost impossible to imagine them without life. Because it doesn't matter what time you go, in the night or in the day, you see some cars going. You see some people working. You see some... Uh, something moving on. But in these moments, he says that there will be no life. Everything will be desolate. And um, uh, there is, um, I saw some images from um, Ukraine. There was uh, an explosion uh, many years ago. And the cities and everything there remained desolate. And um, the huge buildings, some of them, they just crashed. Some of them, they just uh, uh, were destroyed. And uh, on some of them, you just can see the, um, the walls, but you would see even trees on the top where, <laughs> because of the, of the wind that it brought uh, dust there and um, the plants started taking life there. But at this moment, he says that it will be void. That means that neither oxygen will be there. So if there is no oxygen, there will be no, no life. Nothing that has life today will be there. So to what extent will this world be empty? Isaiah 24, verses 3 and 4 says that the land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled. For the Lord has spoken this word. The earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world languished and fadeth away. The healthy people of the earth do languish. So why is this going to happen? Why such a desolation on this earth? Because as uh, we studied in the Sabbath school lesson, what happened to the people? Why they were um, cursed by God? Because they, they defiled the law. They uh, broke the law, the commandments of God. So the same says Isaiah here, that this earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinances, Broken the everlasting covenant. So um, this is the result of breaking the law of God. This is the result of changing the ordinances of God. And this is the result of breaking the everlasting covenant that we make with God. So how long this um, image will be there? We already man, um, mentioned that there will be a thousand years. And just um, to have um, a better uh, image about this, I mentioned that um, this is a period of a thousand years where there is no life on earth. No one is, uh, the saints are in heaven, the um, wicked ones are dead. It starts with a resurrection, the first resurrection when the righteous ones resurrect and go to heaven, and it ends with the second resurrection. So um, at this second resurrection, all these wicked persons, which are from the beginning of the earth, which did not accept the uh, covenant of God, which did not accept the grace of God, they will be resurrected to see God, to see Jesus in his, with his um, righteous ones. And what is happening with Satan in this time? Because we didn't mention anything about him. What is happening with him? Uh, as we read even in our um, scripture reading in the beginning, he was bound there for a thousand years. And um, what kind of bounds did he have? What kind of chains did he have? Because a um, um, literal chain cannot have any strength when it's coming with evil powers. We, um, uh, we are doing the review on the book of Matthew, we notice those um, two which were um, um, 
cursed with the evil spirit. And it says that they were the people tried to um, to chain them, to um, bound them, but they broke the chains. So with the uh, chains, Satan cannot. You cannot hold Satan with chains because uh, this um, he will have enough power to break them. But it must be a um, chain of circumstances. Because just think about this. What is his job right now? We mentioned that he is standing. Always going to and fro. Doesn't matter what age you are. Doesn't matter what position you are feeling. He is there to do his job. And for, more, for about 6,000 years, he has been tempting the people. And at this moment, the saints are in heaven, the wicked ones are dead, and he has no one to tempt. And um, it's interesting, uh, I'm not, uh, I remember when uh, my parents would take me to the uh, my doctor office or somewhere, and they would be inside where we had to wait. And um, first you try to keep yourself busy somehow, like... Uh, looking around or doing something. But after a while, waiting an hour, two hours, you get bored. And what do you do then? You start thinking. So in these moments, Satan is going to have the opportunity to think to the results, to think to uh, the success that he was thinking that he is going to achieve. And uh, he said that um, he should deceive the nations no more, Till the thousand years should be fulfilled. So this time, for a thousand years, he has no people to work with. He has his... Uh, do we have a, a word for that when your business is uh, done? <laughs> Bank... Yeah. So in these moments, he has nothing to do. Nothing to do. Uh, just um, to understand this bottomless pit, because um, uh, many people are asking uh, this question and um, they bring all kinds of theories, but this bottomless pit, uh, pit uh, comes from, um, a, from a word which means abusos, or abusoi, which means dark, waste, desolate region, in a state of chaos. And this was the... Um, as I mentioned, the first um, the image that we find in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 2, that it was without form and void. Um, this is the meaning of this word, bottomless pit, which means abusos. Or abyss, we, we have even this word also. So uh, the same Jeremiah says that at that time when um, uh, this... Um, a thousand years takes place, the earth shall be the same way, without form and void, as we read in the book of Genesis chapter 1. So Satan, together with his um, co-workers, they have to wait. They have nothing to, um, to work on. And um, at the end of um, these thousand years, again, there is going to be the resurrection of those who were dead of the wicked ones and at this moment satan again he is going to uh, to to, de to deceive them but what happens in heaven in this moment it says that um, um we read that um those the righteous ones will go to heaven and they will do a judgment a judgment about what what they will judge during this a thousand years. And it says that, do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matter? Knowing not that we shall judge angels, how much more things that pertain to this life? So um, the ones which are righteous and they are in heaven, they will do this judgment. And um, this judgment, it's about more like um, seeing that God is right in his decisions. Uh, do, uh, this way, no one would have any thought, any doubt that God wasn't, wasn't right in um, working with such a case. If uh, they, in this time, uh, for a thousand years, they will have the time to reason.
they will have the time to see why did God take this decision. They will have, if they will have any questions, God is there to answer to them. God is there to, de- to answer to them. And they will reason together. And at the end of this uh, thousand years, they will say that, yes, true and righteous are your judgments. And um, at these moments, when they will finish this judgment, there will, there will be this resurrection. As we read that this, uh, the rest of the dead, they will not live again till the thousand years. And at this 1,000 years, when they will be uh, ended, it says that um, Satan will be loosed from his prison. Now again, he will have um, a people to work with. He says that um, he is loosed out of his prison and shall go to deceive the nations, which are in the first quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather to them together to battle. To number the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. So at this moment, it says that um, John saw the image, what is going to happen at this moment. And he saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem descending out from heaven. So at this moment is the coming when um, uh, Jesus is coming with the new Jerusalem. And um, the um, dead, the wicked ones are going to be resurrected to see what they lost also. And at this moment, what did Satan does? He is going around them people. He is uh, making them sick and healing them. And telling them, look, that is my city. It was stolen from me. Let us get it back. According to Revelation 29, it says that they will compass the camp of the saints about. And at that moment, um, and just if we see around um, uh, the um, history of um, the battles, um, how many people passed away in the battles? Uh, all these people, these warriors, will be there. All the technology from the beginning of the world till the end, the war technology will be there. The war, the war machineries and all, all, all the things that they have. So uh, they will have everything on their side, as they think. And they look um, to the city and they said, oh, they are just a hand of people. We can, we can take them. And even at this moment, she says that Satan... It's uh, the great general, and he's bringing everyone to the battle. And what is happening next? He says that, um, I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and the earth was found no place, and there was found no place for them. And the books were opened, the dead were judged of those books, which were written in the books according to their works. So at this moment, when they start to, when they try to, to conquer that city, there will be the sentence given to them. So um, uh, this a thousand years is beginning from the last days, and um, when it's finished, we go into eternity. And um, uh, this starts at the second coming of Jesus. When um, the righteous are raised, the living saints with the righteous saints which are raised, they are caught up um, and they will go to heaven. The wicked are slain, Satan is bound, and the earth remains desolate, without form and void. And then, for a thousand years, the righteous will be in heaven, they will... um, um, judge the world, the wicked remain dead, and Satan is bound by a chain of circumstances on the earth. And uh, then after this, a thousand years, Christ, the saints, and the holy city, they descend from heaven. The wicked are resurrected. Satan is loose. He is trying again to um, uh, deceive people, and that will be the final judgment. And uh, what is next? Satan and sinners are destroyed. 
So um, just as a wonderful promise for us in our conclusion, he says that the great controversy is ended. Sin and sinners are no more. The entire universe is clean. One pulse of harmony and gladness beats through the vast creation. From him who created all flow life and light and gladness throughout the realms of illimitable space. From the minutes min atom to the greatest world, all things animate and inanimate in their unshadowed beauty and perfect joy declare that God is love. So um, would you like to spend that eternity with him? With the one who, as John mentioned, that he shall wipe away all their tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. As mentioned, at this moment, we still have the time of grace. We are still before these events to happen, and we can prepare for these events. We saw what is the beauty, the, um, um, as we even uh, sang the song, the crown of life for the righteous ones. While the others, we just defined, we just explained what it will happen after. So uh, during the seven plagues, they will suffer all the plagues. At the end of the seven plagues, they will die. And uh, you saw the image that the birds are coming to have the feasting there. And at the, the last moments, I think that's the hardest image to see what, you, what could have been yours. And you see that, well, I lost the chance. I lost the chance. That could have been my bless, blessing. May the Lord help us that um, we might take advantage and uh, we might prepare for his soon coming. Amen.